Hello and welcome to uh, JavaScript tutorial number 8. Today we'll be learning how to trigger CSS transitions using a very simple JavaScript. Using this technique you can animate various properties of your HTML elements. There is quite a few tutorials uh, on that subject. Unfortunately most of them uses an approach where you change the style properties directly in the JavaScript code. It's much more efficient just to change the class name with JavaScript and then have some predefined transitions in your CSS. In one of the earlier tutorials I showed you how to change class names with JavaScript. So today we'll be focusing more on the CSS. I will however introduce a JavaScript concept that we haven't been working with so far. The add event listener method up until now we have been using the classic approach to attach events, but today you're going to be learning this newer method. Here you can see a demonstration of what we'll be coding today. We have this element that expands and contracts on the click of a button. Now I have created a new HTML document and I'm adding the elements that we're going to need. We will need the animated div itself and we are going to give it an ID, call it moving div and an initial class name called class1. We will also need a button element to trigger the animation and I will give it an ID of btn and it looks like this in the browser. Now I'm going to create the generic styling for the div element uh, which is the properties that is not going to be transformed. I will use the ID selector to attach uh, these properties this is mainly cosmetic styling. We we'll add a font family and a font size, uh, background color and font color, etc. And as you can see, I haven't uh, given it any values for width and height because that will be the properties that we will animate. So instead, I will use the class one selector here to add a height and width and I will give both a value of 0 pixels. Then I will create uh, some rules for a new class called class2 and I will give it a width of 400 pixels and a height of 100 pixels. Now we need to create our script block and I will do that here just before the closing body tag. And then here we will need two variables which is going to be references to our HTML elements. We will need a reference to our moving div element and to the button and we're just going to target the ID using document get element by ID. And instead of adding an onclick event to our button, I will use the event listener method. The method takes three arguments. We will need to specify the type of event, which is going to be click and then a function to execute. And in a minute, I'll create a function called toggle class. And the third argument is a boolean value to specify if we want it to happen during what is called the capturing or bubbling phase. And I'll just set it to false. It really doesn't matter in this example. Now I'm creating our toggle class function. And inside the body of the function, we are going to create an if statement. In the condition, we're going to check if the class name of the moving element is equal to class 1. And remember to use the double equal to signs as it's an comparison operator. In case the conditions are true, then the code will move on to the execution block of the if statement. And in here we will simply change the class name to class2. We will also create an else block which will be executed if the element does not have a class1 attached. And in here we will simply attach class 1 to the element again. And as you can see, we can toggle between the classes now. But we still have no animation. In CSS3 we have a property called uh, transform and we could set it to a single property like height, but in this case I will apply the transformation to all the properties of the class. So uh, I will use all and then I specify uh, one second for the transformation. And then I'll just copy and paste the transformation to the other class as well. This will work in most modern browsers. 
But to ensure support in Safari and possibly some versions of Chrome, we will need to add the WebKit window prefix. Window prefixes are used with experimental CSS properties before they are standards. And when we use them, we should always insert them before the property itself. So now we can try it in a WebKit browser like Safari, and you can see it works fine here as well. There's just one thing uh, I forgot. You can see it if I change the color of the text here, then uh, the text will actually uh, go outside of the uh, div boundaries. But we can fix that in the CSS code by giving it an overflow property with the value of hidden. That will prevent the text from uh, going outside the div. Now I have added a bit of text under the elements, just to show you that if you don't want the animation to push down other elements, you can change the position in CSS to absolute, and then the animation will cover the elements below. One last task could be to change the text in the button on the click as well, and we can do that uh, by using inner HTML on the button element in our if and else statements. So now I will leave it up to you to create a lot of beautiful animations. Remember that you can uh, uh, animate almost any CSS property using the transform uh, method and using CSS transitions for your animations will make them a lot smoother than uh, if you were to use timer events in JavaScript. In this example here, we were using uh, width and height, but you can be real creative by animating CSS properties like border radius and have a square turn into a circle. Uh, it's really all up to your imagination. You can even use a 3D rotation and stuff like that. But for now, I just want to say thank you for watching. Uh, remember that if you have any questions or comments, you are more than welcome to uh, use the comment box below. You can also contact me on my webpage if you don't want to use the YouTube channel. And even though I haven't had time to uh, upload tutorials lately, I always take time to uh, reply to any questions. So don't be afraid to ask a question. And remember to share, like, and subscribe and all that.